So I started climbing when I was six years old and we dreamed of having a training area for the winter time and for the wet seasons and the first training areas were basements or sheds and obviously you tried to put as much wall in it as possible. Uh, you stole an old mattress from somebody, put it under it and that was it. So when the first commercial gyms came up, it seemed to be the same concepts, just put as much wall in as possible um, and that's a huge mistake because you need people that are happy in the gym and at the end you want as much people as possible in the gym, as much paying customers um, that can be there, climb and be happy. We call it active and passive spaces. Active spaces are where you climb, where you fall down, where you do sports and passive are where you don't do it. And as you know, when you boulder and when you boulder hard, you do a lot of breaks, you pause, you wait minutes 50 minutes, five minutes, and then you climb maybe one, two tries, and that's only a couple of seconds. So the passive spaces are super important. So this is the first passive space. It's a walkway. You need to know where people walk. It sounds super simple, uh, but we're still in a really early stage in, in gym design. So sometimes it's completely forgotten where people walk. Um, it's also where people can use normal, normal shoes, and it, it separates it like without signs. Um, and that's the first passive area. You can just sit here and watch around. You can change, you can rest. The next passive is you can sit like this. And the big advantage is if you design it well, people will not sit here. You can see it in many gyms, they just sit here, which, which they block basically the whole, whole climbing area here. And it's a huge um, hurdle to come here and talk to the guys if they want to move. Nobody does it, so it blocks the gym. But if you make a really nice and easy and comfortable rest in the back where you have a nice view, people will automatically always go back because you want to be in the most relaxed position. You know, nobody wants to sit here if you have a sofa in the back. So even in this space where it's a little tighter, we made the investment because it costs money to basically to, to, to make from your mattress supplier a, a, a back part um, where you can lean in like on a sofa. But Come to our gym and look at it, we never have people sitting somewhere close to rock because there's always a defined position where it's much nicer and easier to sit. And also here you have two positions, that's the more active, you want to basically jump in directly again or you change your shoes, you know, you, you go off because you have small shoes or you really take the 10 minutes and just watch your friends. Here you can see it's, we're just filming and we can see it, we made a small like sofa area and it's perfectly used. So active and passive spaces, it's really important that you figure out how many people do you want to have passively in the gym and how many active. So if you have five climbers, do you have 20, do you have 30, do you have 40 people passively and do you have the, the space for them to nicely sit and relax. This can be at a table, eating, drinking coffee, but it also has to be on the climbing area. Um, and it's also a safety issue that they are not in the falling zone, so you, so you want to um, offer them a really nice space where they can relax, be safe, have a nice view. So you are in charge to really uh, move the people in your gym, <laughs> not by force, but by really good design. Um, I hope you like the idea of active and passive spaces. Be free to send us pictures how you solved it. Uh, if you have comments, just comment it. Uh, write us emails. If you have questions, we'll love to chat with you about it.